What's up guys? This is Yeah Boy. This is gonna be a whole different kind of video than what you're used to. This is gonna be a long vlog. So first off, we have 5,000 subscribers. What's up? That's so exciting. Second, we got a new camera set up. Very, very high quality camera. So now, you guys can see all of the details that you never wanted to see on my face. Here they are in 4K, native 4K, recording raw. What's up? I know, I know, I'm gonna keep it back here. <laughs> and uh, let's see, third, I am using a professional screen recorder now for most of this video. Unfortunately, I was using a free screen recorder that I thought was gonna be fine for this kind of video. Just a real quick solution, but it ended up being real choppy, so uh, for the beginning and the very end of this video, I am using a professional screen recorder. Let me show you real quick. Here is my scene. I'm using Streamlabs OBS. I drag this over from the other window. So I'm going to bring this back over here. See, actually, look, I can swap scenes by hitting, tapping on my Sony A7C, and then just going back to the scene, which I need to rename this to main desktop or something like that, main screen desktop. I have three screens right now. So when it's now... Well, let me switch it back to the A7C. So, number four, I want to give a shout out to Mike Russell on YouTube. He is a professional audio engineer. I don't know what the official title is. Maybe I should look it up. But check out his uh, YouTube channel. He has a whole lot of tutorials on audio production, uh, equipment, how to edit stuff in Adobe uh, Premiere. No, Adobe uh, Audition. I guess he, no, he does have some videos on Premiere Pro. But, um, audio, like music creation, he, he does everything, the whole shebang. He's got a really big company over in the UK, and I did a, a, a session, like a, a coaching session with him, and he, he helped me fix my audio issues. He suggested some equipment to purchase. He basically fulfilled all of my expectations and then some. He exceeded my expectations in that, in that one-hour session that I had with him, and he even sent me a recording of our session so I can refer back to it and if I forgot anything that he said I have the recording of everything so I mean it's perfect so yeah he's actually been really helpful um he did not ask for me to sh do a shout out or anything like that I just really appreciate the quality of his coaching and the quality of his work and how much he's helped me so that's why I'm doing this shout out it's not like sponsored or anything like that in fact he doesn't even know that I'm doing a shout out in this video I just I was like, hey, I really appreciate you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a shout out in, in one of my videos. So, so yeah, go check out his YouTube. It's Mike Russell. Definitely worth the time. And subscribe to his channel. Check out his stuff. It's going to help you improve your content just like mine. All right, and then was that all four? Did I mention four things? 5,000 subs, new lens, so you can see all the details that you never wanted to see. Then we have the screen recorder. Yes, and then shout out to Mike Russell. So in this video... By the way, if you're looking for some real quick content for that quick serotonin release, this is not it. This is like, if you, this is the kind of video where if you just want to hang out with me for, for an hour, this is it. Just real slow pace, just kind of like chill, you know. Um, for, so what I did was a few days ago, I recorded a vlog where I was updating everyone on what's going on. And then I decided just to give some more content, I was going to show how I was going to produce this in Adobe Premiere Pro. So that if any of you want to get into content creation, or if you're already a content creator, you want to see how I did certain parts of my video, then I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. And unfortunately, like I was saying, that screen recorder, the, the free one, it became really choppy. It was supposed to be 60 frames a second. And so, and it wasn't, it was, it was just bad. So uh, most of this video has that bad screen recorder, but then I decided at the end, I'm just going to stop here and go download OBS Streamlabs. Let me swap over to this and bring it. So with OBS Streamlabs, now I'm actually able to record, well, a proper 60 frames a second, but uh, I am using MP4. Where's, okay. So native 4K, I'm not downscaling or upscaling or anything. We have, these are my settings. And, and by the way, if, if I'm doing any of this wrong, please let me know because this is my first time using this this stuff, but uh, this is my video color format. And then if I go to my output, my recording, MP4, I'm recording desktop and my, my mic. And then uh, CQP level one is supposed to be the best. I tried to set it to zero, but it said it couldn't 
Like, it's weird. There was a YouTube video where someone said it's, the range is from 0 to 30 or something like that. But I wasn't able to set it to 0. I don't know why. Um, but I'm trying to get the maximum quality that I can on these screen recordings. So if you guys know of a better way, like I tried MP4 with NVENC new and with, I think that was it, with lossless. And so lossless was going to record to AVI. But uh, for some reason, every time I did that, the recordings didn't capture my screen. And instead, um, it was just blank. And so I didn't know how to fix that. I, I, I checked out so many tutorials, set all the audio to 320. So yeah, this is how I am uh, screen recording right now. And, and I'm very satisfied with the quality. So uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead. If, if you see me in a Navy shirt, that was the vlog from three days ago. And then when you see me in the red shirt, that's today. So I'm going to pick up. I'm going to pick up. See this video here. This is what you're about to watch right here. And at the end of this vlog, and after I go through and show you guys how I'm editing it, at the end of that, I'm going to switch back to today to finish up that video, to finish up the tutorial. So I guess if, if y'all are down to stick around, I will see you in an hour. What's up, guys? This is yeah Boy. So I want to give you guys an update on what's going on. I know I haven't uploaded in a while. I did finish building the PC Ran into so many issues with the, building it, which blows my mind because I built another computer in 2018. No issues at all. Built this one, which is way, way better. Running into so many issues. Uh, I had to relearn Adobe Premiere Pro. I was on Final Cut Pro 10 on, on my MacBook Pro for the past two years. Relearned Adobe Premiere Pro. Learned a whole lot of new skills, which is really cool. And you'll be seeing that in that video. Yeah, so I haven't uploaded in a while. Uh, one of my fleet mates actually, VC, suggested, and in, in he thoroughly explained why I should be <laughs> giving you guys some updates and at least some content rather than no content while I'm working on this, this main video, which is going to be like the best video I've ever made before, by the way. I'm so excited to show you guys the, the, the finished product, which is not, it's not finished yet, but uh, hopefully it will be soon. We'll see. Um, I just have so much more to do. I have no idea. I've abandoned the whole timeline and the goals of let's get it done by this date and this date. Instead, I'm just like, I'm going to do it the right way. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to do it the right way. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be awesome. Not cutting any corners. So however long it takes is however long it takes. I, I, I thought very naively that it was going to take one to two weeks to make that video, which turned into months. But now that I'm in the summer break, I'm not... I don't have to deal with any college courses. I can focus on this video, so I should be speeding up the process, but I just wanted to do a different kind of video right now. Uh, I'm going to just call, sort of vlog about what I'm doing today, right now, just so you can kind of be in the loop and at least have some sort of content. Uh, this video here is just, it's, honestly, it's nothing special. It's just to give you guys something. So actually, right now, I have my iPhone on the left, uh, pointed down at the desk because what I'm literally doing today is unboxing a product, this ProGrade digital uh, dual slot card reader because I need to transfer these 4K files from my camera to my computer faster than using just the, the cord from the camera to the computer. So we're going to start with that and I'm sure some of you guys may have noticed that I have a new haircut, new hairstyle. That is, I just opened the wrong knife. So yeah, I actually did get a haircut yesterday. It is, it is different. It's, it's much shorter. It's much shorter than what I'm used to and what you guys are used to. And I haven't had my hair this short in a long time. So I'm not, I, I, I think I like it. We'll see uh, how, how it evolves over time. Like, you know, how it grows out and, and yeah, we'll see. I think that I like it. I think I might stick with it. I got some compliments on the fade. So yeah, right now I'm going to unbox this and need to cut. Oh, I've already cut the tab, did I? Okay, I cut one tab. Got to cut the other tab. Let's see. Well, this camera, this other camera is at the wrong angle for this, but yeah. Alrighty. This is exciting because this, this is a really fast card reader. So it has the standard slot plus 
the, what's it called, the Express. I don't even have it because this camera doesn't have the Express. But is this focusing? We'll see. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Is that the Express? Is it? Well, I could be wrong, but you can look it up. I think that I can only use one of these two slots. I could... Did I buy the other one? Maybe I bought the wrong one. Anyway. Oh, what is this? This is cool. Came with a... It's like a... A, uh... Let's see. Alright. Get off my finger. Came with this plate that I can stick to something. So yeah, that's cool. I don't know where I would... Maybe you're supposed to put that on your case or something. But yeah, so... The memory card in this camera holds 256 gigs. In the making of my current project, not this vid, not this video you're watching right now, but the PC build and streaming setup video, I have filled, that's, that's, let me look. I have filled up the 256 gig card six times, plus the 64 gig alternative card, one, two, three, four times, maybe five, I have to check if there's anything currently on it. But yeah, that's, that's over a terabyte easily worth of footage so I have over 30 hours of footage, and I need to get that, I would, lo I would love to get that down to less than 30 minutes because, I mean, most of it, that 30 hours of footage is not all me talking and doing stuff. It's like, well, it is a lot of stuff me doing stuff, but a lot of that footage is just sort of blank stuff that I can cut out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but it doesn't mean I don't have to skim through it. I still need to skim through it and cut out everything, and I've already done a whole lot of it, but, yeah, it's just been, that's why it's so time-consuming, not only that, but the kind of content I'm making on that video, on this upcoming PC build and streaming setup video, the kind of content is the highest quality I've ever produced, and I'm doing things with, I'm, I'm doing a lot of animation and things you've never seen before on my channel, so, it's, yeah, it's just taken a long time, and one of the issues I ran into by the way, um, you know, my, my fleet and people on my Discord server and inner circle, they, they all know about these problems, but one of my fleet mates, he's like, hey, look, your YouTube channel doesn't know about these problems, so we understand why it's taking so long, but they don't. So they're like, he's like, yeah, you should probably update them. So I was like, yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. So I'm, that's why I'm making this video today. So uh, one of the problems, I'm not going to go through every single problem, but one of them that was really frustrating is that after I spent over a day's worth of hours producing, making the video in Premiere Pro, I did a lot of time remapping and nesting. I did nesting and time remapping combined and speed ramp combined. And that basically, after I saved the project, closed and reopened, it just destroyed the footage, all the work I did. I let Adobe themselves take control of my computer and we spent I think it was two hours. I don't remember the exact, I think it was two hours of them trying to fix my project to recover all the work that I did. And at the end, they said, sorry, we can't recover this. You're just gonna have to start over. And we're working on a bug fix for this, but we don't know when that's going to be fixed and when it's gonna come out. So your best, your only option is either to wait for the bug fix and hope that that fixes your project, which is already destroyed, or start over. And I was like, well, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for like the who knows when we're going to fix it. So I started over. When I started over, uh, I couldn't believe it. So I got further than I did the first time and then realized that all of the audio, except for the first like 10 seconds of my voice, all of the audio was using the built-in camera microphone audio rather than the high quality audio from my Sennheiser microphone. So you know what that means? It, it should have been as simple as just put transfer over the Sennheiser mic audio, uh, sync it. I even have, uh, oh, well, I don't have the program open right now. What's, what's the company called? Uh, it's called, okay, maxon.net, uh, the Red Giant or something. That, that I forget which plugin it is. Um, I haven't tried to use it in a few weeks because it didn't work when I needed it to. But they have a plugin that's supposed to sync your files when you have multiple files, like multiple videos or video and audio from two different cameras or two different sources to sync them together. It was not able to sync 
my already processed and edited camera audio, which by the way, that camera audio, I spent a lot of time editing it to, to make it right. For example, compression and EQ and limiting. Um, I spent a whole, and, uh, and fixing like reverb, bad reverb in the background. I spent a whole lot of time editing that audio and getting it perfect just to realize after all those hours, I was using the wrong, <laughs> I was editing the wrong audio file. So now I have to go back edit the Sennheiser audio, but since the synchronized feature of not only that third-party plugin, but even Adobe Premiere's synchronize isn't working for the already edited audio, now I have to manually synchronize. So I need to go through, I, I'm actually still doing that right now, going through and manually cutting all of the audio clips and manually syncing them to the video. And I'm just like, it has to be perfect because y'all are gonna see, it's gonna be obvious if my words are not synced with my mouth, it just looks off. And that bothers me as a perfectionist, not only as a perfectionist, but just a, a uh, I don't know. I feel like, doesn't it bother everyone? It, like, you know, how you're watching like Netflix, uh, Netflix shows and some of the Netflix shows, I don't know how they pass the past inspection, but the, the, the words are not synced to their mouths. And I'm like, why don't you just take this off of Netflix, fix your production, and put it back? You know, why is this? Why is it still on Netflix? When it when how do the producers not care, or how do they sleep at night knowing that the words are not synced to their mouth, and their their product that they worked so hard on is still so bad, and it's out? I was no, so I have to get my words synced perfectly. And I'm having to do that manually on not this video, but the, the the big project video that I've been working on behind the scenes for the past two months. So yeah, it's just it's just so time consuming, and I'm gonna do it the right way. And that's not the only issue. There's been other issues. There's there's always there's always issues like my my PC crashing all the time. I don't know how this PC is crashing all the time. I I, I don't know. I have all the best parts. This is the best PC, the best for streaming for for what I'm doing. It's actually overkill for streaming. I mean. It's the best media production PC out there for using. I mean, I ha the I think the only upgrade I can think about would be if I see I have it. This is a 16 core CPU. It's a 5950X, 16 core, 32 threads, and I could go up to the thread rippers, but I just don't think there's a need to for the length of my videos in general and for streaming and all that stuff. But I got a 3090 overclock, got 128 gigs of 3600 CL16 RAM. Why is this PC crashing? I got a water-cooled CPU uh, loop on here. I've got 10 Corsair QL120 fans. Uh, cooling's not an issue. Um, for some reason, Windows decides to crash sometimes. And I've checked in the event viewer on my PC, I've checked for the WEA log errors, and I'm not generating WEA uh, errors, WEA logs, and I've reinstalled Windows. Uh, I've actually had uh, Microsoft themselves uh, look at my computer and take control, and they're like, yeah, we don't know what's going on, maybe BIOS updates and stuff, and maybe it's the BIOS for this motherboard. I mean, I have a really high quality motherboard. It's, it's the ASUS Strix, uh, R or SUS ROG Strix Crosshair 8 Formula, which is a very expensive, high-quality motherboard, which can handle overclocking and custom water loops. And, yeah, I just don't know. I, I, I think maybe the 128 gigs of RAM is what's doing it. I've maxed out the motherboard for RAM. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people are like, man, overkill, you don't need 128 gigs. What the heck, wait to... I'm like, no, I do, because... I started, in fact, when I started the PC build video, I started with 64 gigs of RAM, 3600 CL16, 36 gigs. It's a G-Skill Trident Z Neos. And so these are, this is really high quality RAM, okay? I had 64 gigs. It's fast. Um, when I was exporting uh, media from, when I was rendering an After Effects, it was using up all of the 64 gigs and of course, you have to have uh, some headroom for other programs. It forces you. So I think it was like 
the maximum was like 58 or something like that gigs out of the 64. And it forced me to save like six gigs for other programs. Basically, I wasn't able to use Premiere Pro and continue editing on Premiere Pro while After Effects was exporting this rule, was rendering. And you would think it'd be really fast, but no, After Effects is so slow. It doesn't utilize your, it doesn't utilize the full, like the multi-core uh, CPUs. I don't know why, you know, the, the beta actually does to some extent, but it still doesn't utilize the full CPU. Um, there is a solution called Render Garden that I've heard about. I haven't tried it yet. Render Garden should make it a whole, a whole lot quicker exporting from After Effects. But the main thing was I'm using all of this, all of my available RAM, and I need to be able to multi multitask. And if you're thinking, oh, well, just, why don't you just wait for After Effects to be finished rendering, and then, you know, just take a break, and then go work on it. Well, the thing is, I was exporting a 2 minute and 21 second long clip. 2 minutes, 21 seconds. And it was just so, we're doing so much real time, well, uh, so much, it's, it's not like I'm rendering an already made video, it's creating the animations in real time. It's, it's creating animations, what, like, what that particular video was, was a audio visualizer. So it's creating all of the renders. And so 20, two minutes, 21 second clip took three hours to export. So with that 64 gigs of quick 3600 CL16 RAM with 16 core 32 thread CPU and RTX 3090, the best graphics card in the world right now, that two minutes, 21 seconds taken three hours, three hours for two minutes, 21, that's a no-no. That's a no-no. I was like, no, 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 no. I need 128 gigs. I need more, I need more RAM if that's the, the bottleneck right now is the, is the RAM. So... Yeah, so I upgraded 128 gigs, and now I can export from After Effects with, I mean, it, it'll still use all the 128 gigs, but at least I can allocate 64 gigs to After, or at least I can allocate like 90 gigs to After Effects and leave uh, 30-something gigs for dedicated to Premiere Pro and leave a few for the background for other random tasks. Um, but yeah, so I'm just trying to optimize my production be as productive as possible reduce export times and render times especially like a two minute video a two minute export two minute 21 second clip should not take three hours uh it's just ridiculous so anyway i mean it, i was exporting uh, at avi lossless so that when i move it into premiere pro then when premiere pro compresses it it's compressing a lossless file Rather than compressing it in After Effects and then compressing it again in Premiere Pro and reducing the quality twice, uh, I only want to compress once when I move it in, you know, from from uh, Premiere Pro com compression. But then, of course, when I compress into YouTube, well, when YouTube processes it, inevitably it'll be compressed a second time. But then that would be three times total, and I was like, no, let's compress the least amount of times total so I can have the highest quality that I can possibly produce, you know. And so anyway, I'm all about quality. You guys know I'm all about quality. But yeah, I'm running out of time here on this memory card. So let me go ahead and stop. Got to stop the iPhone. I'm going to stop the video on here. And then I, I, I may show you guys a preview of some other stuff. Actually, I can probably do that now on this same recording. So here's something exciting coming up. we got the Stream Deck. Stream Deck XL, I have not opened it yet. It's still sealed, but I'm excited to use this thing. I had, so I haven't set it up yet. And then we have some other, other upgrades. You may have noticed that obviously the awesome quality camera upgrade, we have lights in the background. I have, so I'm using the Philips Hue play bars back here. I only have two Philips Hue play bars behind me, but I have two more boxes for a total of four more lights that I haven't opened yet. And I'm going to open them, you know, with a video like this and put that into the PC build video. I'm actually, I still have, so I still have more filming to do for the main project, but I wanted to get everything in, like start working on the video, get everything in there, discover the problems that I have in production and make them better. For example, 
I had auto white balance on during the PC build video, the main video, which was a no-no I found out because trying to match the, the, the colors perfectly and the lighting and everything between the scenes. I had ISO on auto because I was moving around a lot and moving the camera and I had auto white balance on auto. I don't know why. First time being a filmmaker of this kind of quality and content and caliber and I've, I've learned my lesson. Now I have my ISO is set. Auto white balance is set. It's not changing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I've got, of course, you. I have these two Elgato key lights, you know, angled angled here. So I, I like those a lot. I can control them with my phone, just like the Philips play. Let me show you something else here. Let me turn this camera around. I don't want to spoil the PC build yet. It, it looks so good. It, it, it's, it's, oh, it's just, it's just beautiful. Um, I wonder if I could like show you, maybe I'll give you a glimpse. I'm going to give you guys a glimpse. But for those that have, that have, uh, that are still watching, that have watched through this whole time, you're going to get a small glimpse. And it's going to be real quick. So that hopefully it doesn't create like a little thumbnail when you're skimming through so that people that are, that didn't watch up to this point, can't skim through and find it. But then I want to show you this other thing over here. I might cut this section real quick. Okay. Quick glimpse, and I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but this is what I do want to show you. This is what I want to show you right here. This DBX286S, this thing is awesome. This is processing my voice in real time so that when I'm streaming, the quality is consistent because before I would just record on the MixPre 3 above it and then I would uh, have to edit it in Adobe Audition. And I was like, well, how am I going to do that in real time? Here's a solution. DBX286S, this thing's awesome. I, right now I have it compressing my voice. Well, first off, it's amplifying Oh, it just ran into the, into the um, monitor here. So first it's amplifying the microphone. Then I am compressing it. I, I have the de -esser turned off. I'm turning the uh, low frequency detail up a little bit and the high frequency detail up a little bit more. I have a very strong gate on here. Gate slash expander. Uh, I have the gate... Well, the left knob, the threshold is on maximum because I have an air filter behind me. It's turned off right now, actually, but normally this room gets so warm that I keep the... Well, here, let me finish showing, tell, explain this, then I'll get back to that. Uh, after, the, after the expander gate, then the final thing is just final output, which I, uh, output gain, which I have to zero. It goes from... It goes out of the DBX86 into the MixPre-3 above it, then it goes from the MixPre-3 up into the back of the computer up there. And then on the right here is the Fio K5 Pro, I think that's the name, and that's just for my external headphones. So, and then I have this here, which, is this focusing? Is this not going to focus? I hope it was focused the whole time on the DVX. Let's see. Hello, we are focused. The Go XLR. I thought this was going to be a really nice solution. Turns out it lowered the quality of my voice recordings, and I was like, that's a no-no. Now let me turn this around. And one second. All right, I accidentally turned the camera off when I was turning it around, but it works out anyway because... Oh, let me start this. Start this other camera. It worked out because I only had a minute left on this flash drive, or that flash drive, on this... Uh, SD card right here. This is a really nice SD card. This is super quick and it's perfect for the pro grade because this SD card reader uh, is USB 3.2 Gen 2 which transfers up to 10 gigabytes per second which is super quick. Super, super quick. Yeah, this is awesome. I hope that focused. I didn't check. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is just put this in here. I do have USB 3.2 Gen 2 on my motherboard, which is perfect. So let's get this on yeah, this camera. Uh, so yeah, we're going to put this in here. Put it in. Let's put it into the computer. Let's actually see how quick it'll transfer these 
4K files. Let's see here. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to stop this. I'm gonna have to make a cut in this recording. Okay. What's really cool, I just found out the bottom of that is magnetic, so it just sticks to the top of my PC case really well. And I really need to get this camera higher, but I don't have the permanent setup for this uh, installed yet. So y'all are actually just like sitting on this tiny little tripod on the desk here. And I can't go back very far because we have a triple monitor setup and a small little desk. I mean, it's not a small desk, but it's not a big desk. Uh, with three monitors in my face here. I just don't have much room to push this back. I, I really need to mount this thing back here and probably move the microphone somewhere else or adjust the light because the microphone at this angle is casting the shadow on my face. Yeah, still working on the whole setup, but... Um, let's see how fast this is going to transfer. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, let me... Let's, 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 uh, move my iPhone to record the screen. Is this straight? Okay. Hopefully this will do. So, right here we have a, it says 230 gigs. I thought it was a little more than that. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, so 230 gigs with 1.85 gigs free. These are 4K raw files at the highest quality. If... Yeah, 100 megabits per second, 4K, 30p video that we're recording on right now. And on this other memory card, we're going to transfer this over and see how long this takes. Wait a second. This says it's transferring at 268 megabytes per second. That is not... What's going on here? Did I plug it in the wrong slot or something? Aren't both of the slots on this thing the same speed? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, the front of this says, look, USB 3.2 Gen 2. On the first flip of a page, over, we have explanations of the two cables. USB 3.1 Gen 2. But on the front, 3.2 Gen 2. Isn't that something? This thing is substantially slower than it's supposed to be. And I don't want to, like, stop the... I don't want to stop the transfer in the middle of transferring. But I also want to, like, diagnose the issue. Like, maybe it's... Maybe there's something wrong with one of my USB ports on the back of my PC. You know, maybe I need to try a different PC port. Or maybe it's just because I'm... Transferring so 200 something gigs all at once, but that shouldn't be a problem. I mean if you're able to transfer 10, 10 gigs up to 10 gigs per second A little disappointed right now. I'm not gonna lie Not sure that I'll be putting this on anything About 12 minutes estimated time remaining not impressed not impressed Oh, I just realized that I had the door open to the adjacent room, so I actually had a portable air conditioner in the other room blowing in to the sound recording studio here. And so if you noticed any difference in quality, that's what it's like when the door is open, and you can, you, you'll be able to tell how well of a job this DBX286 did at cutting out the background noise from an air conditioner less than 10 feet away on the other side of the wall here, blowing into the into the door here. So yeah, it actually does a really good job, but the quality should sound, if you have really high quality headphones, you should be able to tell the difference in quality now that I've shut the door. So, but anyway, found out the bottleneck was not the pro-grade card reader, but actually the memory card itself. That memory card, although it is a beast, it is it, it, it cannot handle... 10 gigs per, or anywhere close to 10 gig, gigs per second transfer speed. Uh, it is, what did I read? It says, up to 277 megabytes per second read speed and 150 megabytes per second write speed. So, 
We are transferring at 266 average right now, 268 average megabytes per second. So it's actually transferring at pretty close to the maximum speed. And when I started transferring, it was really hot because it was recording 4K raw from this camera. So at a, as, as a really hot SD card, which is going to decrease the performance, it only lost a few megabytes per second. It's really pretty close to, I would imagine it's well over 90%, probably 95%, let's calculate it. Well, I can't, can't my phone is being used right now. Anyway, very close to maximum performance with a really hot SD card. All right, there we go. It's finished transferring. That took quite a while, a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and what should we do next? I feel like I should set up this camera in a different angle. Everything is, every, everything's in the way. I need more room. How about this? How about I show you guys me making this video in Adobe Premiere Pro, and then at least you have something, some kind of content besides me just talking about stuff. You can see me making something. I do need to get this camera a little better angle. Like I need to, should I put it here? All right guys, so now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put this together in Premiere Pro, this video you're watching right now. I'm gonna open up my file in Adobe Audition. I'm gonna go to File, Export, this audio browse. I'm gonna go put it in the folder that has this update video footage, save it. Now I'm going to go to Premiere Pro where I've prepared some of these clips. I'm gonna drag over my audio. I'm gonna create a new bin right here, audio. And this is the audio we're gonna replace. This is the good audio we're importing. Bring this over from that folder I exported to. Drag this in here. Now, yeah, look at all of that audio. This is from the different clips and the spacing. So you can actually see that these clips were like here and here. And this clip, these clips are actually like here. But yeah, I'm gonna undo this. So I'm gonna, first I'm going to sync the audio before I make any edits to the audio, which is a mistake that I made when I was making the main PC build video, but now I've learned my lesson. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm going to trim this. Let's cut this here. And let me go here and I'm actually going to unlink, let me unlink this. Unlink the audio. Zoom in here, grab these two. We're gonna hit synchronize, audio track one, okay. And you know what? I hope, yeah, good, I'm glad it worked because, oh, look, you know what? Here, this is a problem, this might be a problem here. I hope this didn't override anything right here. Yeah, that's a problem, CSAT, okay. So by doing that, when it moved this audio track over, it actually, when it comes on top of this other audio track, now that's all deleted. So if I move this back, and I'm trying to recover this audio, I can't. Overrode it and just deleted it. So we actually need to undo that first synchronization so I can get this audio right here back. What I need to do is grab all of this, move it over. This is, see, this is why I like Final Cut Pro 10 better on Mac. It, it will not delete these the audio like this on Mac. There's just so many additional problems that come with Premiere. I'm always running into problems with Premiere. Actually strongly considering trying um, DaVinci Divin Resolve to see if it's just easier to work with, less frustrating. I mean, Premiere Pro is easy to work with. It's just, there's just so many problems. It's like, why? Okay, now, uh, so now that we have all this extra space on the right, I'm gonna try this again. And in fact, I'm gonna move this audio over too just to make sure that doesn't get overridden. I'm gonna select these two clips, synchronize, audio track one. So now I'll move these over. These are synchronized, but now I need to get this audio back in sync with the video. So I'm going to cut this over to here, grab both of these, bring them both back over to the start here, and now it should be synced up. Well, I'm hearing my voice 
twice. Yeah, it's because both of these audio tracks are enabled. So actually, I should be able to, if I disable, if I mute this audio track, my voice should line up. Now let me uh, render this real quick. It's taken a little while to render this because of all these layers and effects that I had. Should look like my vo my my voice is synced with my mouth. Oh, we're having all this clicking, clicking. See, another issue with Premiere Pro. Why is my audio clicking like that? When, like, what's the... It's still clicking. It might, if I save, if I save it, it might fix it. No. There we go. Okay, now it's sounding better. Now, now we got the clicking going on again. Okay, anyway, this, this looks like it's synced up to me, so. What in the world? See, if I bring this over here. Okay, we have two programs open. Audition, Premiere Pro. Well, I also have internet open, but that's not, shouldn't be taking up too much. Uh, yeah, this, this is, th this RAM 13% load is from, out of 128 gigs. What's taken up most of my CPU load? Top processes, CPU. Oh, recording this. You know what? That might be recording my audio at the same time might be causing this audio issue. But this happens anyways, whether I'm screen recording or not, this happens. Ugh. Okay, I can't wait till I get a proper screen recorder like OBS. Rather than this, this is all new to me, guys. So anyways, so this seems synced. So now what I'm going to do is delete this first audio file, the bad audio. I'm just going to drag this back up, and I'm going to link these two. Going to link. And now, this audio, I can go in and trim the end here. Oh, wait, nope. Okay. Before I link it, I need to... Bring this back here. Now I can link them. There we go. Okay, that clicking will go away, I'm assuming, as soon as I stop screen recording. And that also, that clicking shouldn't happen when I have like OBS Studio or something, but uh, either way, it happens all the time with Adobe Premiere Pro. I just don't understand. So now this is what I did to the video. I did like four things. Let me go back over here to the beginning. So the first thing I did was I noticed that my camera, which is, I'm still new to this camera, was too saturated, it was too sharp, and bringing out way too much details on my face. It's just too harsh, has too much clarity. If you're familiar with Photoshop, clarity is like an actual little uh, light, manipulation you can do to reduce to soften the photos or make them more sharp sharp edges make it more gritty is the clarity slider but uh, how do you do that on video I don't know but what I have done is if you look up here we have this plugin called Cosmo which Cosmo you'd be very careful because if you if you're not too careful you're gonna start looking like you have makeup on but what I wanted to do is just lessen it just a little bit so I'll show you before and after Here's before, here's after. So it gives a little bit of blur to my skin, but not so much to where it looks like I have makeup or something. It just makes it it's just so subtle. See, watch. This is on, this is off. This is on, this is off. So it's just so subtle. It just reduces that gritty, the gritty uh, uh, sharp edge look where you can see all the little fine details of every, every pore of my skin. So I'm doing this, and then, and by the way, the the settings here, I just selected my skin tone, uh, increased the offset, kept the tolerance at default. Uh, I increased the preserved detail from default 25. I increased it up to 50.88. Um, contrast, I don't remember if I, yeah, okay, I reduced the contrast, and then the strength was default 100%. I cut it in half and put the strength to 50%. So I think this is a very subtle improvement. And then on this second layer, I just alt-click-dragged 
this uh, video layer, this uh, the whole video up to duplicate it. Then I did three things, which I don't know well enough to thoroughly explain. Like I don't fully understand it because my first time using it, I just saw some other YouTuber doing it, and I was like, hmm, let me see if this improves improves like the way my video looks. So three things. First, I added the Gaussian blur effect to the video. I put this at 20 blurriness is going to change based on your resolution, your, uh, your footage. And I enabled repeat edge pixels. Then I went to Lumetri color and I desaturated this entirely. So by the way, this second video layer, this is what this second video layer looks like. So I added the Gaussian blur. I went to Lumetri color, went to saturation here and desaturated it completely. And that's right here. And then I went to the curves. I brought the blacks up, the whites down, and the midtones down just a little bit, up and just down just a little bit. This is going to increase the contrast um, right by bringing the midtones down right here. And then I just went to the um, is it the blend mode, the opacity, and I changed the blend mode to soft light. So here's this, well, you know, you can't really notice much with this, but here's like the Gaussian blur I added. I don't know how exactly it just makes it look better, but so here's Lumetri Color, desaturated it, Gaussian blur, and then changed it to soft light. Of course, you can't see anything until I enable the layer below it, but when I enable and disable this layer, you can see it's just adding some pop, more contrast to my skin, the, I don't know, it just, it looks a little softer and more contrasty. I think this looks like a more pleasant lighting effect. So I, I decided to keep that my first time trying that. And on this layer, this adjustment layer is where I do most of the color editing uh, for this. So let me de let me deselect this top one first. You probably didn't notice what happened there. But now if I go to the main adjustment layer here and I turn it off and on, this is what the camera started with minus these other effects. Okay. Uh, so, th so this is what we're starting with right here. And I'm making it brighter or to show you I I did uh, I corrected the white balance and the way and the way I did that was later on in the video I held up a white piece of paper that I was talking about so I just selected the white piece of paper with the, co the color picker right here and that corrected the white balance uh, uh, I increased the whites so that it's, everything's like brighter so watch if I bring it down or, or up like this is what that's doing so I found a good spot right here, like around 17. Uh, I desaturated everything by 5 because my camera seemed too saturated. Look, if I bring it back up to 100, it just seems a little too saturated to me. I think this looks better at 95. And I've made, actually, the I'm recording on it right now actually has camera, cha camera changes since I put this together before I started recording this segment. So now I'm recording with uh, two settings less on the saturation uh, on the camera, so we'll see how that turns out. And then on this last layer, keep an eye on the highlights on my forehead and cheek. What I did was I just darkened the highlights so that they're not so overblown, so the color isn't overblown. So... And actually, I'm adding more color to it, basically. I'm just taking the highlights that are, like, overblown and white and adding color so that it doesn't look so overblown. So watch right here, and I'm going to do before and after. I'm going to do, right now it's on. Here's off. Off, on, off, on. Do you see the difference? Off, on. So, so it's adding color to these overblown highlights on my forehead. It's a side effect of these bright lights that... I really need to add a diffuser, like another diffuser to these lights. So yeah, so that's all the color correction and stuff, the skin correction and color correction, just to make, just to make the video a more pleasant viewing experience. And 
this audio is still messed up. So this should get better with when I when I'm done screen recording. So what I now that I have this audio lined up, I'm going to sync uh, this audio, like all of these clips, and just cut it here, cut it here, bring this, bring this back. Yeah, I can just do this real quick just to show you. I'm going to select this audio clip, unlink it. Let's give some more space here. Oh yeah, you know what? Here you can see, actually, if I disable this layer, this is, this is what I started with. This is what my video looks like without any... Oh wait, no, this is still on. This is what it looks like without any uh, editing right here. See, because I turned off this Cosmo effect. Now if I turn this on, well, you can't really tell right here. All right, maybe right here. Okay, right here. If I turn... Is this... Wait, it's on? Okay. If I turn it off, on, off. See, it's just so subtle. You can barely tell. But it just, my skin looks slightly more pleasant. Easier to watch all the... I guess everyone has different preferences, but... I think it looks too gritty without it. So, so I'm going to sync these. Let's go to synchronize the audio. Now, come back to the beginning here. Grab this and bring them over. Now I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim the other side. And then I can just go ahead and trust that it's synced up. Well, maybe I should test it real quick. Okay. Besides all the clicking, that sounded like it was pretty synced up. Now I'm going to link these together. And I'm going to do the same for these. Now remember, you want to do this... You want to synchronize your audio before you edit your audio because the synchronize tool in Adobe Premiere Pro has issues syncing audio once it's two audio tracks once they're edited. If you do any compression or EQ, then it'll have a harder time syncing the audio. So now I've got all my audio tracks here synced up and linked to the... So now I can actually go back make all the, finish making all the cuts that I want to make, compile the video once all that's done, then I can take my audio, open them up. What I'm going to, what I would do is, like let's say I want to edit this audio right here. I would just right click, edit clip in Adobe Audition, render and replace. This is where I would go in. I actually don't know yet since I haven't done it yet. I haven't played around with it yet. I don't know if I would add, if I'm going to add compression or not. I probably will. I probably will mess with some EQ to take away some a little boominess or unpleasant room noises. Um, I will. I'll probably compress it a little bit. It looks like there's just too much high frequencies over here, and my low frequencies are a little low. I mean, this this is a pretty good track. Just a little compression, more compression would help it sound even better. So once I would do that, I would just click Control Save. And that's going to bring it back and then control W to close it. That'll automatically update it in Premiere Pro. And you can undo and redo and stuff in Premiere Pro to, to uh, if, if you end up not liking the way that sounds once it's back in Premiere, if you have video in the background or something like that. So yeah, now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do all that. And I'm going to stop this screen recording and add it to Premiere Pro. And I'm going to stop this and add this. Alright guys, so one more thing that I just remembered is I need, before I make all the cuts, I need to drag my uh, iPhone clips into the project. So I'm going to drag these over here from my other window, put them into my clips folder, my clips bin. I need to sync the audio from all of the video files that I'm going to use, if they're going to be, especially if they're going to be stacked, before I go in and cut it all up and edit the audio and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to go in and here and add another video track. So now we have five tracks. 
I'm going to move my adjustment, adjustment layers up. Let's drag this video clip on top here. And we have another one that's going to come in later. I'll just bring this other one in over here. And then we're going to unlink it. We're going to synchronize. Well, you know what? I actually might be able to keep it linked and just synchronize it that way. Let, and let me get this audio track up to here. Synchronize. Wait a second. Why? See, this is weird. See, why is it so complicated? Why synchronize clips, audio track channel one? Maybe I should just unlink all of these. Let's go to unlink. Everything's unlinked now. We can link or synchronize these two audio tracks. Why does it only say ch track channel one? There's two track channels here. Why can I not synchronize? Why can I not select both? Like why, it doesn't give me the option. Neither of these are linked to anything. Hmm, it's weird, weird. See earlier with the other track, you know what? Okay guys, this might be a solution I'm gonna show you. What I'm going to do is drag this down and go back to this video. Zoom in on this cut right here. Okay, I'm going to set this to the end point. I'm going to go to the end of the video and set this to the out point. Now I'm going to hit F. Well, I need to actually open up. Actually, hold up. Open this up. Okay, now I'm going to hit F. And this should, well... I don't remember if F is, okay, it doesn't appear that F's doing anything. I wonder if I, if I set this to in and this to out and I hit F. There, yeah, so F does do something. So <laughs> it finds the, the in to out, I think. Let's see, F, right? Uh, it's weird, it's just weird. This is just so weird. Maybe I should unlink this, maybe that's it. Hit F. Well, apparently that doesn't do, any, do anything either way. So I have the end to out of this video. And, oh, you know what? Here, that is that is what, that, this is what's going on. There, now I hit F. Okay, so now F works. That's just weird, guys. I don't even know what's going on. Uh, see, this is such a hassle. Such a hassle, Adobe. Okay. F. So now, see before the audio drag audio only was not lit up, so I wasn't I wouldn't have been able to drag the audio before. Now I can drag the audio just from this in to out point. So now that I brought the camera audio back in from the same segment in to out, now I can synchronize I should be able to synchronize these. Let me unlink the audio from the iPhone video, highlight only the two audio tracks, synchronize. Why can I not select audio track two? Why does it say track one? Why? Adobe, what's going on? It's like just earlier. It worked fine earlier. I swear I'm gonna try DaVinci Resolve. Right after I finish my main PC build video, I'm gonna try DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so I synced I synced these audio tracks. Now all I'm gonna do is bring this back and I'm going to, I know I'm not gonna need this audio, so I'm gonna bring this back. Now these are synchronized, so, and I remember that the, oh, you know what? Hold on, go back before I mess this up. I need to relink the iPhone audio to the iPhone video. There, now I can highlight these, and I can actually delete, just trim this back. Now, move these. 
this should be synchronized now. Everything should, yeah, all the audio waves are lining up. See here? Yeah, besides all the clicking that's happening because I'm screen recording at the same time, this is synchronized now. So what I can do is go to my iPhone video. Let's go to the effects. And I'm going to scale this down. Why is this at 200%? Oh, it's because this is a 4K video. We're going to scale this down to, let's say... That's too small, 25%. Let's go to 50%. Okay, 50% will work. We're going to bring this down here and over to the corner. And then I can make this perfect later. I'm just going to add a little space here. So it's going to look like that. There's a little... This this is fine, I guess. Can, uh, I'll make it pixel perfect later. Literally, I will make it pixel perfect later. <clears throat> so, now that we have this, I'm going to go to the part where I actually unbox this thing. Where do I pick it up at? Because this second video is going to pop up once I'm actually interacting. So maybe right here. Let's see. Maybe about right here. So now I'm going to trim this back. Alright guys, so we're back now. Back to the current day. I ended up having to cut off that recording because... Well, the other screen recording because there's so many audio issues and it was just jumping so much. So this is where we left off at. And let me resize this down here. So this is that part where that looks good. This is the part where my iPhone video comes in. And I have my iPhone on the left uh, pointed down at the desk because... So notice how where I cut it was actually where I see my hand movement. Right when my hand gets down here, it's like I'm throwing the picture. I'm throwing the picture in picture onto the screen. Yeah. Uh, pointed down so the that just kind of worked out. So that's where I chose to cut it right there. Um, all of the audio is lined up. And I've done, as you probably noticed, I did a whole lot of stuff, that, <laughs> a whole lot of animation stuff, moving the, moving the uh, pictures around that I didn't show you yet. So let's get to that. Uh, so I just added some text above here when I was talking about Maxon, Red Giant, the Plural Eyes plugin, and um, some text in other spots as well. Now, the main stuff here, now right here is where that screen recorder came in, and let me find a spot where I moved the, here. Okay, right here, we see this animation from my camera webcam the transferring. So the first thing I'm going to do is to the top up I'm here. I'm going to trim this. See that? That little transfer? So not only did the background get bigger, but I moved the webcam at the same time. The way that I did that, it's really useful to know this. I tapped on, first I went to the background. You go to the background um, video, and I'm adding in keyframes right here. So I keyframed the position and the scale of the background. And then I brought it up here and added keyframes. Let's see, right here. And to get it to be real smooth, you right click. And you go to, for, for the position and scale, they're similar, but a little different. On, t on the position, you go to temporal, ease out. Well, that's ease in from the second point. You go to the first point, and you ease out from the first point, and you ease in to the second point, And that makes it nice and smooth. Now, scale, it's just as easy as just going to ease out, and then go to the second, right-click on the second point and go ease in. And so that makes it... I'm going to trim this Look really good like that. And now I did the same thing for my web, my webcam here. Zoom in here. So this is where we started. Now to get to make sure it's exactly at the same time, you can hold shift and drag the playhead over to the left and it'll automatically like magnet uh, lock on to these um, It'll, it's like, it's called snapping, I guess. It'll snap to these locations. 
Then you just swap. See, I'm, I'm clicked on this bottom video right here. Let me make this bigger so you can see which one I'm talking about. This XMG, this bottom one, that's the background. So I went to the background, locked onto these positions. Then I clicked on my webcam here. And then I just zoomed in here, added the keyframe. So now they're, they're actually, these keyframes are at the exact same timestamp. So then I went back to the background image, went to the second point, the, the, the ending point of that one, swap back to webcam, then add the keyframes here. And this is a crop actually, so uh, I have a crop thing going on, I'll tell you in a second. But then I just did the same thing for that position, just temporal, ease out, and then right click on the second one, temporal, ease in. That means it's going to slowly ease it out of that position and then slowly ease it into the next one. So it's not just going from no motion at all to immediately like full throttle speed to the next position because then it just looks real sh uh, sharp. Like it's just, I don't know, choppy? I don't know what you, how you would describe it, but instead it's real smooth when you slowly speed up and then slowly come to a stop. Um, and it's actually pretty quick because I have these keyframes so close together, but... So the first thing I'm going to do is... It is still trim this smooth. It's still very smooth looking. Um, so then I did the same thing for these other keyframes here, like, okay. And you know, like this. And now for the crop, when my picture was down here, I cropped the top a little bit. I brought the image down. Let me show you. Uh, let's, let's go back to the beginning here and find this keyframe. So right here, the crop is at 4% off the top. If I go to zero, see right here now, it's, uh, now if I zoom in, let me zoom in here so I can show you. Right here, my webcam is actually overlapping these lines, so it doesn't look as good. If I put that 4% crop back, now, this line is straight. Everything looks better, symmetrical, more aesthetically pleasing. But if you notice, when, when I move it up, now let's reset this zoom. When I move it up here, I don't need that. I don't need that crop. So actually, when I have a keyframe here, I put the crop to zero. So back here, it goes from 4% to when it's up here, zero. And I have this on ease out from the 4% and ease in to the 0%. So you have more picture right here. And so yeah, there's no... And then actually for the right, I keep this crop on 25% at all times. And I hope you can see... Yeah, looking... Because I forgot I still have this webcam here, making sure you can still see everything. Uh, yeah, so when I have the webcam here, I like I guess I could come over to this window and drag my face around. But in general, uh, that's going to stay right there in the corner. But anyway, back to this. Um, yeah, we we're talking about this right crop. So if I set this to zero, see all this extra screen here? Y'all don't need to see that. This is just wasted space. Basically, when I could, I really need as much of this screen over here as I can get. So I take this away, and now we have that, and it, and it fits better. See, if I take if I take away this right crop, put it to zero. Now I'm covering up some of the timeline here, right? I have less space to work with to show you guys what I'm doing. So I just crop that 25%, and now it fits. It fits nice and and good in that corner, and. Now let's um, let's talk about some of this these audio issues here. Uh, I ran into some major audio issues with. Uh, I, I I allowed that screen recorder to record my audio, and I didn't realize how much of a problem it would be by recording the camera audio at one sample rate and one bit rate, and then letting the screen recorder record my voice also at a different sample rate. I, I, I guess I, 
I just didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about needing to have the same sample rate. But what ended up happening was my voice over the course of 20 minutes or so becomes multiple seconds off of the camera of what's of my mouth, my mouth, you know, they're out of sync by, by multiple seconds. That's how bad it gets. But for some reason, uh, for some reason, every time I sync manually sync my voice, drag like this in here. So I have, this is the camera audio and that's how I get, that's just how I get the screen recorder and my webcam to be in sync. But so I uh, unmute both of these. I can hear my voice. If it sounds like one voice, drag this in here, or pretty close now, to one voice, then it's it's pretty close to synced. All of that audio. But for some reason, every every once in a while, there's a clip that and that just gets way out of sync after I've already synced it. I have to. I've had to go through and resync my voice manually so many times because I'll get it perfect, but then I try and recover this audio. Like one of these will just get moved over, moved over like a whole lot. And it'll be way off, like a second off. And it just happens so many, that's, that's why I have so many cuts in the audio all over here. This took me so long to go in and fix. And it's not just because I was like, I, I wasn't doing it once. I've had to move these things m multiple times. I don't know. And references, but also look at how these audio waves, they don't even... The preview doesn't look like it's synced. Like, this looks off, but when you play it, it's actually synced up. I guess everyone has different preferences. And when you zoom in, it actually now, look, the waveforms look like they're synced. And then you zoom out, and they're not. So it's like, uh, it's it's annoying. <laughs> actually, it's it makes it more difficult. See, look, this looks so out of sync. Zoom in. Oh, no, suddenly it's synced. No. But, yeah. Um, so some of these will get out of sync. i got to go resync it. And I've, I've probably resynced, manually resynced, all this audio at least three times and complicated why are you i'm just hoping that when i export the final video it stays synced because yeah anyway so now that i'm recording with streamlabs obs this should not be an issue at all because this is a professional recorder and anyway now let's see what else what other animations did I do, let's see, um, I already showed you how I was moving the webcam. Uh, for right here, this was a little tricky. I don't know why I was having trouble with when this was jumping, when I was moving this timeline up and down and it was jumping. I think it was right here that I had to, yeah, I just had to, what I ended up having to do is just cut the video and just set the the new position of this video see there's no there's no keyframes here in this clip between here and here well this yeah. so i'm actually going to go in and okay that had a key for that that had those keyframes to bring it to here but once i'm dragging this up here to add another video track let's go back here this just becomes straight up uh, a, a static position and i cut the clip and I cut it again here, because right here, the bottom moves up. So I just did a cut and just put a new static position here, no keyframing. Because otherwise, um, since it just jumps like that, there's no smooth transition. The If you do keyframing to move your, your picture up, it lags it lags behind behind the other video. So it would actually be overlapping some lines at the same time. So it just looks smoother, like they're moving together when I when you cut it like that. And then, let's see. Okay. Got everything lined up. What I ended up going with for, let's go back to the iPhone video and, and all these pictures within picture. The final balance for getting this in this corner perfectly, like pixel perfect, ended up being when I had my iPhone video at 50% scale, uh, position was 300 or 3,330 on the X-axis and 1,860 on the Y-axis. 
So 3330-1860. And that got a pixel perfect. There's 30 pixels in between the edge of the video on both corners. Between the edge, to, from edge to edge. Edge to edge, okay. Let's, uh... Now let me show you the beginning of this video here. So, let's bring this here and make this smaller, make this smaller. So at the beginning of this video, I haven't put in anything right here yet. I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do a, uh, maybe like a, a, either black and white of like what's coming up or, or just keep it in color, but maybe do a bunch of, of cuts of what is in this video as like a preview of what's coming. And then, then it'll jump, I'm thinking, to what's up guys. What's up guys, this is Yeah Boy. Now notice right here, I am not, I don't have any filters, any adjustment layers or anything on this clip. And actually, if you look at the video, I have done nothing to this video. And I think I'm going to keep it that way. We'll see. Let's, let's go ahead and look. Let's drag these adjustment layers. Actually, not the top one, because the top one is adjusting the highlights from the light. But I have adjusted the light a little bit now. So let's just bring this adjustment layer over and see what it looks like as a preview. And off, on, off, on. Huh. Yeah, it's... uh. See, when I turn it on, some of the whites get overblown on the monitor. And these highlights look a little harsh. I mean, they're still harsh no matter what. But I think I'm going to keep it with no adjustment layer just, just because for a reference, I guess. Why not, you know? Oh, now this is all out of... It's all red. Let's go back to green. Undo, undo, undo. Come on. Go back. There we go. Yeah, we'll just keep it like this. And right here for 7C. So number four, I want to give a shout out. To yeah, for Mike Russell, I just put the cut in here right right where I was like, number four. Number four. Number four, I want to. And notice how right when my fingers come up is when he pops up. So it's like you're, it's so subtle. It's like a, I don't know what you call it, subliminal. Um, not subliminal messaging, but. But it just looks smoother. It's like my my fingers are bringing up the picture, and you might not even realize that that's what's going on. That it just, but it it makes I think it makes it look so, better. Number four, I want to give a shout out to because when my hand comes up, then comes up, my Russell pops up. So, uh, and then over here, hey, and I, my hands come down and he, he disappears off the screen. A really big company over in the what? UK, and I did. I could actually make that a little better. I UK, think. About right here, I'm going to improve this. Right when my hand comes down here, it's like going to swipe it off the screen. Let's see how this looks. UK. And uh, it looks a little off. UK. And Maybe that looks a little better. Let's go back one more frame. UK. Yeah, okay, it's getting better. We're in the UK. Okay, maybe one more frame. Let's see. UK. Hmm. Either that one. Either that one or the other one. It's got a really big company over in the UK. Now let's... Um, I think that one. Let's company see. over in the UK. I'm going to go with that. I ended up... I did a all Z. It actually disappears just before my hand. But for some reason, I think it looks better than when my hand is lower here. Any, anyway, you get the idea. And... Right here, right when my finger comes up, Mike's picture pops up. So it's like my finger's bringing it up into the into the image. So yeah, go check out his. See, see that right there? Let's see. Oh, let me make this bigger. Right here, my finger comes up, and there there goes his picture, right there, frame by frame, boom. So that makes it look much smoother. So yeah. Go check out his YouTube. It's Mike Russell.
It's these small little things that can improve your videos. And you just got to have the patience and go through the process, even though it's tedious, like mine. It's worth it. Like, Notice right here, my hand comes down and his picture goes away. It's, it's that subtle, subtle thing. I said subtle. I'm so subtle, subtle, not subtle. It's that subtle Improve thing. Content just like mine that makes your videos better. Okay. Your creation. Now, I need to add in my intro video. So let me go to my project. We're going to go to my intro, drag in my intro video. Let's put this. I was thinking either at the end here or at the beginning. I'm thinking I'm just going to go to the beginning. So let me grab all of this. Drag this over a little bit. Let's go grab my intro video. Bring it to the beginning. And then I want to actually somewhere near the end of the... Now this is where the audio... I'm going to really have to pay attention to the audio waves here of the music because I'm going to have to have it fade in and sound natural, like a natural transition. Let's see. Well, first off, let's uh, render my intro video. This is in 4K AVI lossless, so that the only time it's compressed is once through Premiere Pro and a second time through when YouTube uh, processes a video. So twice, rather than... I think most people would, would import a already compressed intro video, and I, that, that will lower your quality your final quality, because then by the time YouTube processes it, that's three total compressions rather than two. If you export from uh, After Effects in, in AVI lossless format, then yeah, it's going to end up looking better. So what we need to do now is make sure that when this is fading out, music cuts in at what sounds like a natural time. Let's see. And let's look at these audio waves. And you don't need to see the video, so I'm going to just bring this, bring this, make it a... Actually, just for now, I'm going to bring this up a channel, and so I can see it better. And I'm going to mute this so I can listen for, listen for a cue. It sounds like it'd be a good place to make the music come in. Maybe right here? Let me see. I'll just for now, I'm gonna, just to get an idea, I'm gonna move this back. I can fix that later, but. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, this is muted. <laughs> oh, it's still a little late. It's a little late. Bring it up a little bit. Uh, feels a little late. Let's bring it up. There's a dip right here, actually. See that little dip? I'm right on it. So, let me bring this over just a little bit. That was too much. Let's get the audio right on that dip. It's hard to get it perfect because since, since these are linked to videos, you can only move the audio according to keyframes. Uh, you actually have to unlink the video if you want to be able to move the audio according to the audio time units rather than keyframes or rather than the, the actual frames of the video. That sounded like pretty close, like it was pretty good. Okay, let's get, let's go somewhere around there then. Let's bring this back. And then grab this. What I'm gonna do is just group these so that I can only have to, I only have to grab the audio and everything else will stay synced, see? And where was that dip we were thinking about? Let's see. Was it, was it this one? It sounded kind of smooth. I feel like maybe what if we try here, right there? Oh, 
Oh, that sounded pretty good, actually. Let's 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 see. Let's uh fix this real quick. This is, I'm gonna reduce this by three decibels. Oh yeah. Okay. I like that. Let's do that. And then we're gonna come up. Okay. Now let me add in a, a, a transition in. We're gonna go to effects. Go to. Uh, what was it? I forget what it's called. Let's do auto crossfade. There we go. Let's go to constant power. Uh. No, 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 no. I think I like it better without it. Yeah. But there is, it, it is off just a hair. Where's this beat I'm looking for? Is it this one? You see that? You see that little spike right there? Thinking maybe if I bring this over. I can't see, I can't get all right on it because uh, there's no, this is in between frames of the video. Let's see how this sounds. That might be Oh, it's muted, of course. Hmm. Now let's undo that move and see if we like the first version better. In fact, what I can do is just, um, let me unlink everything. Let me just increase the gain on here. It'll be easier to hear the transition. Okay. If I move it over one frame, well, I need to relink all this. Go to, oh, group, okay. Now, if I move this over one frame. Where is it at? Is that one frame? Okay. Nope. This other one was better. This is, this is, this, this one. This is the best one. Yeah, that sounds the best. Okay. So that's where we're going to stay. Intros all the way at the beginning. I already have that at the right level. We're going to ungroup these. I'm going to bring this back down to where I wanted it, which was negative uh, 15. And we are at negative 15 decibels now, so... Now I can actually go back, regroup. Actually, I can group all of these together to keep all these in sync. Because I have them exactly the way I want them. So now what I need to do is just fill in this gap and I can put in maybe some preview of what's coming of like this, this video. So let me find some clips that I'm going to put in here. Okay, so these are the clips that I chose. This is how I put them together. I just... Side by side, I cut them according to the beat of the music here. See right here, you can see there's that spike. That's where there's a, uh, a beat. And then right here, there's one. And this one actually happens before this uh, because it just seemed better than cutting right here. Watch, I'll show you. I could... I guess I could do this, but um, it looked better to me. And let's see. Wait a second. That that might be better. Let's see here. Oh, that's it. Because I was blinking right here. That's why. It's like, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. 
Go back here. Well, I still blink here. Yeah, I still blink here, but there's still no... It's, uh... It's like, why keep this in the video, right? Uh, and I, I can't... I can't just... See, I can't just take this back until I am still have my eyes open. Like, I'm not blinking. Because if I take this back and I move this forward, and then I just extend this... Watch, now my hands are not going to be synced up with the music the way that they were. See, that... Da-na-na, 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 boom, 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 boom. My hands are no longer in sync with the music right there. Now if I undo all this... Is that how it was? Okay. Now, see, now my hands are back in sync with the music. See? See that? Wait. See that? My hands are back in sync. So now the trade-off is we have this blink here. Y'all probably never even noticed that, but that's just... I have a very high attention to detail. <laughs> Details. What's up, guys? So, this cut is happening on the beat. This one's just before it, and that's because of the hands. And this one's on that beat. And then right here, we're jumping into here on this beat, right before it, actually. It's like right there. See, here's that beat, but we're cutting in right here. So it looks natural. Now, by the way, my camera is about to die. I'm running out of battery. And when I swapped the battery last time, I forgot to plug the other second battery in, because I have two batteries. I forgot to charge the other one while I was using this one, so now they're both dead. The other one is still at zero. Now it's on the charger. This one is about to die. So I actually need to finish this up really quickly. Um, so yeah, I, I just moved these together here. What? Oh yeah, yeah, I was going to do a cool transition here. You know those things where they like put their, their hand up to the camera and it goes black and then that, that's, how, that's how they transition to the next thing? I didn't know if I, want, if I could do that. I've never done that before, so I, I was like, okay. All I got to do is put my hand up to the camera, right? And then somehow you do some cool transition. Well, turns out... That doesn't work when your hand is still lit up. <laughs> like, there's no shadow on my hand. The camera's supposed to go, like, black, dark, and it just, it, it, obviously it didn't because of the light. Wonderful. So, so much for the cool transition. But what I could do is... Uh, I will see you in an hour. If I cut there, it might look like I'm just waving goodbye rather than doing, trying, failing at my transition. <laughs> failing at the fancy transition. Hour. Okay, there we go. If I just do that, now, now if I grab all of this and just move it forward, I actually don't even need to have a transition. It's just a cut, a simple cut. To stick around, I will see you in an hour. What's up, guy? Yeah, yeah, that looked like I was about to wave. That's fine. Let's see if I do one more frame. If I do one more... That's two... No, that's one. Yeah. Remember, I have my audio time units here, so... These... These uh, lines are not frames. Anyway, so let's extend this by one frame. And... Power. I'll see you in an hour. Uh, no, I'm gonna undo that. Cause then, then that, then, cause you know how I'm, I'm coming forward with my hand to do that, this transition. If I keep too much of that in there, then it just looks like a really awkward wave where I'm like, I don't know. It just looks different. I like it looks better like this. Right here, where it's just cut, cut short. What's yeah. up, guys? That's fine. In an hour. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then... Let me go ahead and control all. I'm selecting everything in the timeline. I'm going to bring this back to zero, zero. 
and there we go. And then unselect and save it real quick. And then over here, something I wanted to do was for, well, first off, I already did part of this. I lowered the gain of, this is my desktop audio here and below is my voice. And this is from the Streamlabs OBS screen recorder. So, and so that makes it, I'm going to trim this. See how you can hear my voice in the video? I'm going to trim this. That's this part. This guy is saying that, not this guy. <laughs> not me. This me, not this me. So I just lowered the gain of my desktop audio by 10 decibels right here. And then, now the problem with that is at the end, so that makes it easier to listen to me. So my, this voice is louder than that voice. But it becomes a problem back here when I'm actually trying to get y'all to listen closely to sure that when this is fading out, music cuts in at what sounds like a natural time. Let's see the music right here. So it's going to end up. I can actually lower this a little bit because this doesn't need to be so loud. Uh, so what I'm going to do is the, I'm going to have the pen tool, which is, I think I have it on a shortcut on my mouse. I think it's the P let me see. Yeah. The P on your keyboard. And then, so you need four pin points uh, around the audio you want to edit. I'm going to bring this up. This up. No, no, we're going down. Oops. <laughs> we're going down. I'm going to bring this down by five decibels. And to get it really precise, I'm just going to expand this, move this up. Now exactly, exactly negative five. So now this and is... Yeah, it's going to end up looking better. Yeah, it's not going to be so loud anymore uh, for you, just for you to hear it. Just make and sure in the replay. When this is fading out, music cuts in at what sounds like a natural time. Let's see. See, like this right here? You need to hear more of this, actually. So, now, music cuts in at... So, actually, when this comes back up, instead of coming back up to zero, which is actually negative 10 dB, because we reduced it, I'm going to bring this back up to 10 dB. So this is how, uh, this is the same loudness now that I actually recorded it at. In retrospect, I could have just kept the whole audio track at zero dB and then just lowered the parts that I wanted to lower, but look how many, look how many tracks are in here that I had. So I just, it's easier to uh, just do this, this here than individually go in and raise or lower all of these. And this is fa just put the whole fading out whole track to negative 10. Music cuts in at what sounds like a natural time. Let's see. Now this is coming up to plus 10. Better. I'm going to mute this so I can music come in. Making sure you can actually uh, hear at the proper level. Where's... Yeah, yeah, okay. To grab the audio and everything else. Yeah, so you can hear that at the same level that I can. And later on, of course, as you know, if you watched, I ended up increasing the uh, volume of the of that audio track to make it easier to tell. But yeah, so that is the whole video. So now, all that's left... Oh, my camera's about to die. Okay, all that's left is I'm going to just throw this at the end of the video. And guys, so this is, remember, this is not the main video that y'all have been waiting for for two months. Uh, this is just a vlog, just to hang out and chill. I am being very creative with my main video I've been working on. Uh, so it's taking a long time. I am not in a rush to finish it. Uh, like I am with this video right now because I'm running out of the battery. But on my main video... I'm taking my time because I'm going to do it right. And it's just, it's just a really satisfying creative project. So hopefully I will have it done within the next few weeks. I don't know how long it's going to take. I, I really can't. I would love to say, oh, yeah, just give me a week. In, re in reality, that's what I said when I first started the video. And here we are two months later. <laughs> so anyway, so, yeah, this video actually just took me a few days. But the, the my main, my baby that I'm working on, my... uh. PC and streaming setup video is very special, and that's why it's taking so long. 
If you think any of the stuff I did in here is complicated, no. This is all baby stuff compared to like what I'm doing in my main my main project. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>